Hi everyone, I'm Stephen Mee. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ahana. We make the Ahana Cloud for Presto, which is the first uh, cloud native managed service for Presto. Uh, wanted to share our prediction for 2021. And uh, we believe that the continued rise of the use of data lakes uh, like AWS S3 and S3 compatibles, we'll see more data-driven companies leverage open source engines for analytics and AI next year. <clears throat> open source technologies like Presto and Apache Spark are much more flexible and cost-effective than their traditional enterprise data warehouse counterparts. Those rely upon consolidating into one, the data into one place, which is very time-consuming and a costly endeavor and also comes with a lot of lock-in. Next year, we're gonna see the rise of uh, uh, analytic engines like Presto that work with the data lakes and other data sources in place. And they're gonna be adopted because of its open nature. And we call this the open analytics stack. Open analytics is made up of four characteristics uh, that are open. Uh, the first is open source, of course. The second is open formats, open interfaces, and open cloud. What we mean by that is the open source software, Presto, is the core engine. Uh, the open formats are things like Parquet, uh, uh, Apache ORC, JSON, and others. This uh, lets you not have the lock-in. That's formats that can be uh, run with other engines as well. And then uh, the open interfaces, you're using things like standard JDBC and OD ODBC drivers that connect to any reporting, dashboarding, and notebook tools. And finally, open cloud. Well, since Presto runs on a SQL query engine without storage, it can be run on any cloud. Hi, I'm Bruno Andrade. I'm the CEO of Shipa, where we've built an application management framework to help you manage the full application lifecycle of your microservices. Looking to 2021, one big industry trend I expect to see is Kubernetes as a technology to take more of a backseat. Although there are a lot of uh, focus and organizations looking and talking about Kubernetes, I expect 2021 to be the year where developers, they will be able to focus more on the application code itself rather than infrastructure and Kubernetes related objects and the DevOps or platform engineering teams to focus more on the control, guardrails and security, again, rather than Kubernetes infrastructure. Kubernetes will still be there, just like hypervisors, but expect in 2021 for the application to be the first class citizen in the delivery of our microservices journey. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Anil Inamdar, and I'm the VP and Head of Consulting at InstaCluster, a 100% open source company. I have two predictions for 2021. Prediction number one, expect enterprises to become increasingly comfortable adopting open source data technologies for their big data and analytics needs. The scalability, security, and reliability benefits of open source at the data layer are plenty ripe for the taking and 100% open source data technologies always offer considerable cost savings over proprietary solutions or open core versions that trigger vendor and technical lock-in. Prediction number two, most enterprises will enlist open source Apache Kafka to power their applications. Dependent on real-time analytics, Kafka's low latency and near limitless scalability really makes it a proven game changer when it comes to delivering performant big data analytics in real time. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim DeWaren, Senior Director of Solution Marketing at Infinera. One of my optical networking predictions for 2021 is that this is the year when open and disaggregated becomes an expectation for service providers rather than an exception. By disaggregating portions of the networking solution, and utilizing well-defined and open interfaces like those in OpenConfig and OpenRotom, we can accelerate the pace of innovation, enable more choice for service providers, and optimize economics. Open and disaggregated is something that's happening across many different product categories, including the radio access network for 5G, as well as the underlying 5G transport network, where we see the IP MPLS uh, routing stack and software being disassociated from the underlying packet hardware. We are also seeing the rise of open optical networking, where transponder and muxponder modules powered from optical engines like Infinera's i6 are disaggregated from the underlying optical line system. 
Think about it like a highway and the cars that run on the highway. Um, the highway itself is pretty static and may not change for years or decades, while the automobiles and the engines in those automobiles is constantly changing and evolving. Optical line systems in this analogy, of course, are the highway and the uh, automobiles or cars represent the transponders. Open optical networking means that the pace of optical engine innovation and thus the associated transponder functionality can be accelerated while enabling a broader industry deployment and adoption of these modules and technologies because they run over any third party uh, line system. So in closing, we expect 2021 to be an inflection point in service provider attitudes where open and disaggregated become the norm instead of the exception. Thanks for listening, stay safe, and we'll see you again soon, everybody. Hey everyone, Matt Wallace from Faction here. So it's 2021 prediction time, and I think if there's one thing you could have said about 2020, it's probably that it's not necessarily the strong that survive, but those that are the most adaptable to change. You know, going into 2020, I don't think anybody realized how powerful it was going to be if you were ready to move on a dime, if you were cloud enabled, if you knew how to take your business and turn it in a whole new direction as the entire world was upended around you. I think when people start thinking about the lessons learned going into 2021, multi-cloud becomes a must. Taking advantage of services, innovation, agility across multiple clouds is going to become the norm. Sure, you went to the cloud because you wanted agility in the first place, but can you settle for the agility of one cloud if they're competing to bring you the best suite of services that they can? Probably not. The truth is you need to empower every development team to do what it does best with the tools that are most appropriate. And so, while I think it's probably interesting to predict something like autonomous drone deliveries spiking hundreds of percent, which may well happen, or level four self-driving cars, or maybe adoption of robots in the home, all reasonable things to say. But I think we're thinking about 2021, multi-cloud driven by edge computing, driven by advances in real-time analytics and data warehousing requirements. This is the year we see it get big. I'm Glenn Kosaka, VP of Product Management at New Vector, a container security company that protects Kubernetes across the application lifecycle. It's been a crazy year, and I hope that 2021 brings more peace and stability to everyone's lives. On the cloud native tech front, here's a couple predictions for what this year will bring. First, container pipeline and infrastructure automation will become reduced to practice as DevOps teams finalize and expand their initial Kubernetes architectures. With their cloud tools tested and selected and their container pipeline processes drafted, teams can now focus on automation to prepare for the massive expansion and scaling. Automation will start with infrastructure as code, leveraging tools such as Terraform, and extend into security as code to declare security policies early in the CICD pipeline. There are many benefits to automation, with security and scalability being two critical ones that are required to be able to expand Kubernetes usage across your company. And second, Kubernetes security will continue to be a hot topic among DevOps and security teams. The recent man-in-the-middle vulnerability in Kubernetes disclosed as CVE 2020-8554 is just one of the many attack vectors for hackers to steal sensitive data or destroy your assets. So I predict we'll see several more critical vulnerabilities in the tools, including orchestrators, that are used to manage your container deployments. As critical business apps get deployed into production, we'll also see hackers getting into those workloads using novel techniques, which combine new container specific exploits with traditional application exploits in a kill chain. So please stay safe out there in both your personal lives as well as your cloud native deployments.